Hello my friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. So we're going to do an update guys on the coronavirus situation and throw some more question marks in there. Uh, this is our second take on this as the first one somehow the microphone got shut off on us. So just wanted to share that guys. Uh, here you see a North Carolina teen was healthy and athletic. The flu killed her in days. Okay, this is published January 16th and it started and this is Lacey Rian Fisher, who was 15. And it started on December 30th. On the morning of December 30th, 15-year-old Lacey Rian Fisher was grudgingly conceding that she wouldn't be able to cheer at Pisgah High basketball game that evening. She had been feeling achy, and she didn't have much of an appetite for the past several days, but she hoped to rally in time for the game. Her dad knew she'd just been exposed to the flu over the holidays, but he figured Lacey just had a garden variety winter bug, given her only symptoms were body ache and clammy skin. She retreated to her room for a weekend of bed rest and apple juice, and when she hadn't improved by 9 a.m. Monday, Lacey threw on some clothes and climbed into her dad Keith's truck for the quarter mile drive to the pediatrician. It was less than 72 hours after she felt the first symptoms. But when she stepped out of the truck, she just kind of screamed out a couple times, Fisher remembers. She crumpled to the ground and just went limp in my arms. And Lacey would never again regain consciousness. By 4.45 p.m., Lacey Rian Fisher, athletic cheerleader, straight A student, beloved friend, was gone. That's shocking. And so... My question for you is, Is was this an uh, actual case of that coronavirus, or was it just simply the flu? Again, she's 15, you know, very healthy and vivacious, and, you know, we were, we're not getting the straight answer from anybody as far as, you know, the number of cases, how long has it been here, and, you know, getting to the bottom line of things when we see that, there's still is so few people being tested and that the test kits in many cases are defective. People are, are showing falsely that they're negative and then test later that they're positive. So what's the real story here? Has this been here a long, longer time than we know? I, well, yeah, we keep seeing these cases where these perfectly healthy, beautiful, young, athletic people are just dropping dead. And you think about what we've seen over in China and then we were seeing in Hong Kong, people just dropping. And the way she dropped like that makes me think of what we saw over in China and what we saw in Hong Kong yesterday where people just, they just passed straight out. And it makes you wonder, is this, is this more than just the coronavirus? We, you know, we, we had that one report out where it talked about HIV inserts and then, you know, there was a retraction uh, to that story, and that got Zero Hedge uh, banned from Twitter for even talking about it. So you got to wonder, are there more than one layer? Uh, are, are there multiple layers to this thing? Is it hit some people of certain genetic strains in such a way that it actually comes across as if they're being hit with a nerve agent or something? You know, it's, it's unusual. And we know it's a severe flu season. Here you see a record-breaking 105 U.S. children have died from flu so far this season. And, yeah, it just begs to question why. And I'll have the link for this for you guys as well. This is what yeah, basically is being sent out to the hospitals. It's giving you the terminology, diagnosis, um, goes on down to the treatment, all about COVID-19. And symptoms, of course, complications, prognosis, screening, prevention, synopsis as well. You know, there's, there's, there's so much more than meets the eye with this. Uh, it's frustrating to see the lack of truth coming through with the cases, the way they're being manipulated. Um, here we see 634 others, 204 in South Korea. South Korea is uh, jumping up. And then we see 107 in Japan. We'll check other sources as well. Here you see 16 U.S., just to show a few. Three Italy, five Iran. And here we see, uh, we've been talking about the outbreaks in prisons. 
the numbers change. Now over here, they must have the cruise ships in the Japan category because Japan has 727 here. But, you know, the thing is, why is a city of 1.2 million in Iran on lockdown if there's only three cases? Uh, coronavirus patient rehospitalized in China's Chengdu after testing positive again. And over here, Chinese coronavirus patient reinfected 10 days after leaving hospital. And this is in Sichuan. So you could obviously get it again. The question is, do, do you ever get rid of it? Is it something that's in your system, like uh, HIV or Lyme disease? Is it something that's just always there? And so in, in a sense, is this another thing that we can add to the list of something that will be immune su suppressive and you know, lend to more people having, um, again, chronic immune-related symptoms, being susceptible to other things that come along. You know, what is the real story here with this? Yeah, I know. They just they keep throwing chaos on top of chaos and diluting stuff, changing stuff. Who knows? You know, one of the things that hit me now recently is with all this going on and how this looks to be something that escaped, uh, can the citizens of the world not start to speak up and say to all the governments of the world to destroy anything they have that's weaponized as far as biological Asians? Why don't we start a petition, you know, um, that we could take to the UN and the WHO and tell them to get off their asses and actually do something that's beneficial for humanity, you know, and, and let's have a mandated, you know, wiping out of any sort of biological agent in every country's arsenal. Um, wouldn't that be a nice thing to do? Maybe we should do a video on that, something on that. We, we need to uh, speak up to a much higher level. You know, why are countries allowed to develop things like this? I don't think the citizenry of any country wants any military developing these things because, you know, again, who gets hit? Well, it's the average person. It's just like in war. You know, we have the kings and queens up in their castles and, and they're not the ones dying on the battlefield. No, no not at all. And uh, we see here South Korean President Moon on coronavirus outbreak. It's a very severe situation. Yeah, without a doubt. And now they're going to build another 19 makeshift hospitals that will fall apart uh, as the ones that they did are falling apart. Uh, as we've seen photos of that as well. And they look more like detention centers and hospitals. And you have Big Brother over in Moscow deploying facial recognition technology for COVID-19 quarantine. Why does it feel like this is an opportunity for the governments of the world to basically just lock down on the citizens of the world even more? What do you think about that? Well, yeah, I mean, I think it is. It's, it's all about the end goal. The end goal is all about control and power. Here you see Iran's health ministry says it's possible coronavirus exists in all Iranian cities. There are currently 18 confirmed cases and four dead. Now, this is a tweet from this morning on BNO Newsroom where we saw over here there was only three, right? Or, or five in Iran, three in Italy. And we're going to see both those numbers are completely off. Um, and then over here we see 11 deaths in Iran. <laughs> okay, so what's the real story? You know, and over here we see Turkish media announced on Friday that after speaking with Iran's foreign minister, Turkey's foreign minister said that according to his Iranian counterpart, there are 758 cases of suspected infection in Iran. You know, all these governments don't give any of their citizens the straight truth. That's the bottom line. So, yeah, I think what we should learn out of all this is, as citizenry of the, of the world here is that, you know, I think we all need to kick our governments to the curb because these governments are not serving the people. Breaking two more COVID uh, cases have just been announced in northern Italy, bringing the announced, total announced to 16 today. Breaking Italy reports eight new cases of coronavirus, 14 so far today. 
well, they're only showing three cases, so what's up with that, too? You know, obviously a time lag, and it's just very irritating, as we see here. Um, and this needs to be translated. So you got 14 infections in just the Lodi area. First are, uh, the first one was that 38-year-old we, we talked about and his wife. And you got 250 people in isolation. This, this is Italy again. Um, and we see a potential coronavirus case being monitored, no symptoms, northern Michigan. And we have repeated delays of coronavirus test kits for Hawaii, and it's unacceptable. Yeah, yeah. the WHO is, is a joke. We know it. They're a total joke. They have dragged their feet on this just long enough to create a pandemic, you know? So again... Uh, I, I, all these officials need to get the boot when you get down to it. We need a new system in place. Coronavirus, Lebanon confirms first case imported from Iran. So how many are really in Iran? And again, you know, a city of 1.2 million now on lockdown there. And the first case that we see down in Venezuela, possibly the patient came from China in December. Symptoms similar to coronavirus. And uh, Scott Gottlieb, who was the head of the FDA, and, uh, you know, he uh, works for Big Pharma, obviously. That's who's always paid the bills when you get down to it. And, of course, you know, we're not supposed to talk of these things. And um, he, he's just said he sent a written statement today before the Senate Homeland Security Committee on U.S. preparedness and other pandemic threats and the challenges posed to medical product supply chain, as we were talking about how so many of the drugs come from China. Um, but, you know, for Sandy and I, we don't take pharmaceuticals, and that's just our choice. And, you know, when it comes to combating these things, we'll, we'll trust in Mother Nature instead of Big Pharma, and that's just our opinion. And, um, you know, here we have, where was I looking at it? Several Americans critically ill in Japanese hospitals. You know, so many of these people. So coronavirus cases in the United States reach 34 and more are expected. Uh, you, you know, we keep finding out about thousands under quarantine, but it's just sh 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 like you can't talk about it. Israel confirms first case of new coronavirus. And I'll look at Harry Chen, who always has a lot of interesting videos. Again, we hope things don't deteriorate like they have in China with the brutality of the police, the system, and then the brutality of citizens on each other. For one, they're, they're conditioned to tattletale on each other, and which brings the knock at the door and people dragging you out. Even people that don't remotely look sick, not even remotely looking sick. And then we see people beating each other up in stores. Yeah, this guy just brutalizes a woman and nobody helps. And then they are... Okay, here we see this gold bank is walled off from civilians. And then they're just pulling people out of crowds and taking people away indiscriminately, left and right. And will we ever see these people? And almost all of them that they drag away look really healthy. You know, they look really healthy and... They don't seem to be sick, and not like people that are face planting. So is this opportunism to get rid of people that are maybe involved in protests and speaking up against their government? I think a lot of people think that's the case now. You know, it's, it's one of those things where you only take so much evidence to recognize that there's more than one thing going on here. Most definitely. So, my friends, as always, thank you for your support on Ko-Fi and Patreon. Like, share, subscribe. Be prepared for whatever is coming, guys, and take your precautions. God bless and namaste. Namaste.